you asked me once also if I could talk about the benefits of creating a thinking environment. Um, shall I go on with that? I found that an interesting question. Please, yeah. Okay. Well, you know, if I behave with you in these 10 ways that um, we've come up with that we have actually been observing, you will think for yourself better, and that is an invaluable benefit. And if groups behave with each other in these 10 ways, they will generate better ideas and make better decisions in less time. That is clearly an invaluable benefit. And when people experience this behavior from others um, anytime, when, for example, they are asked a simple question, what do you think? And then they are listened to with respect and without interruption while they figure it out. They feel energetic. Their self-esteem rises. They have more inclination to collaborate and to learn from each other. And all of that is invaluable, I think. So, finer thinking and decisions in less time, full energy, self-esteem, collaboration, learning, those are some of the benefits of creating an environment for independent thinking. There are many more. You said that one of the benefits was having more time. Were you surprised to discover that? I was. Um, I was. I, I was so thrilled as the um, years went on and it became more and more dependably observable that these ways of being with each other helped people to think for themselves well. Um, I became so excited by all of that that I was fine if that took a little bit longer because I think that would have been worth it more than worth it and that in the end of course um, it would lead to our saving time I, I figured that in the longer run but I was surprised when I began in particular well two things one to watch teams working this way being with the uh, being in these ten ways with each other to see that um, a simple thing like crafting just the right question and then giving each other attention and uninterrupted equal turns to speak could sometimes reduce the time it took for meetings to get to a good conclusion by half. And um, I also was, and still am, really stunned by how quickly in, say, just a minute, minute, maybe two, three, four, five minutes, um, sometimes people can have breakthroughs in their thinking if they are in this kind of environment that have, according to them, been um, unavailable for months, years in some cases. And I do think that what surprised me is that the quality of attention that we recognize works not only improves the quality of people's thinking and accesses new ideas, it also shortens the time it takes to do the thinking. And it tends to lead to better, uh, more dependable action, which when, is, when it is thought through as it is happening, also takes less time. So in a kind of way, the titles, Time to Think, um, really should say, um, something about less time because it takes so much less time. Mm. Fabulous. And so from your experience, what are the essential aspects do you believe, Nancy, that somebody should know about in order to be successful at applying this thinking environment? Mm, lovely. Um, I think... I think there are four um, out of about 400 that I would love to talk about. But there are there's certainly these four. I think the first is the difference between listening to reply and listening to ignite. Um, I think that the, this difference between listening to reply and listening to ignite the mind emerges from the generative power of attention. 
And I think that it is critical, therefore, that we understand that attention is an act of creation. It actually ignites thinking in the other person. It is not a process of waiting. It's not a process of uh, polite um, handing over. It is actually an engaged process of creating thinking in another person. It is actually a catalyst, this kind of attention. And I think this generative attention is less possible when we are listening only to reply. And that, unfortunately, I think is the only kind of listening most people experience in their whole life. And it is predominantly the kind of listening that is uh, that would characterize most coaching sessions, for example. Listening to reply is what we all do all of the time. But listening to ignite the human mind shifts everything. Uh, and I could say a lot more about that, but um, that, that is certainly one important essential aspect of the thinking environment in order to be successful. Um, the second, I think, is the promise of no interruption. Um, I think that when it comes to high-quality independent thinking, to be interrupted is bad. To get lucky and not be interrupted is better. But to know you won't be interrupted is categorically different. It changes the game entirely for the thinker. Allowing the thinker to think of things formerly unavailable, out of reach. Um, And it is this promise of no interruption that characterizes genuine listening to ignite. And a third aspect that I think is essential um, is equality. And by that, in this context, I mean the acknowledgement of our being equal as thinkers, even if we are in different roles or levels of a hierarchy. There is, um, this is a very fine point, I think, this regarding each other as equal as thinkers. Um, even if we have different amounts of information and different kinds of information and very different backgrounds in relation to the subject, if we are gathered together to think together, we are considered to be an important stakeholder in the conversation. And if that is true, given enough access to the essential information, it is assumed that we can all think equally well as thinkers if we are under these conditions of a thinking environment. And that's the kind of equality I mean. Um, I think the fourth aspect that's important is is a state of internal ease while we are listening as opposed to urgency. I like to um, remember that ease creates and urgency destroys when it comes to thinking. There is a wonderful Taoist saying I like that I think is germane Um, there is so much to do there is so little time we must go slowly and I think that ease addresses that so I think these four aspects um, are the most essential generative attention the promise of no interruption equality and ease thank you experience Nancy will the thinking environment approach work in any area and for anyone um, probably certainly up, up to such a huge extent that it is um, it is only uh, it is definitely worth establishing I can think of some exceptions we could talk about but I would say probably because we've seen it work just about everywhere. We've seen it work in contrasting situations like in Fortune 500 teams and boardrooms and in nursery schools in South African townships, in government committees in various countries, in pre-surgical medical team meetings and in national sports championship team coaching and in one-to-one executive coaching in mentoring relationships, for example, and really countless more arenas. 
So I've just seen it working. As far as I know, everywhere anyone has tried it and has known what they were doing. Um, and I also think it's worth noting that some of this workability can be measured, getting results like um, saving senior management meeting time by 62 percent, mm -hmm. reducing the cost of each decision in team meetings by about 44 percent, rescuing, um, I was present for this one, rescuing a 90 million pound product in under an hour wow. and saving 42 percent of a country's a country's revenue in 36 minutes. That was a good day. <laughs> and um, it works, I have to say, though, as long as the mutual commitment among everyone is to independent thinking. If the commitment is to compliance and conformity or obedience, however cleverly camouflaged they are, it won't work. And actually, I would add here, Jane, that I think the question, do we want people to think for themselves, is the overarching question. Um, how can we help them to think for themselves and how far can they go for themselves before they need our thinking are also two hugely important questions. But do we want people to think for themselves is our starting point. Because sadly, if we go by people's and organizations' actions, the answer would be, well, no, not really. Whereas our values would have us saying, yes, absolutely. Thank you. And in my experience, Nancy, when we give somebody the opportunity to think for themselves, and as you said earlier, for us as individuals to create thinking environments for everyone, we experience the benefits that you talked about earlier and in my experience great insights and transformations mm. yes well me too it's it's a gorgeous thing to get to experience and and again as I said at the beginning I think that this has been a process of discovery that I you know I think in front of us all of us all of the time is the evidence um, that it takes certain behaviors from each other to allow people to do that kind of thinking, to have that kind of transformational experience as a team or as an individual. Um, it's right there in front of us. It's just that we have been so deeply disallowed to look at it. And we've been, we've been forced to turn away from all of that. And, and, and now what we can do is just start to see it as it's there. It's shouting to us. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, Nancy, I would love to thank you so much for this afternoon. And I would love to end with appreciating your dedication and ongoing discovery in the thinking environment and your inspiration in support of all of us thinking more independently for ourselves. Thank you, Jane. I've loved every minute. And may I also say that anyone who gets to study with, learn from, or think with you is lucky indeed. Thank you, Nancy.